Open your Bibles, please, to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Tonight I'll be talking about the second garden of Eden. And it is actually coming right now. It is actually coming right now. And the second garden of Eden is actually Lucifer's garden. This is Lucifer's garden. This is not the Lord's garden. For some of you who don't know, sometime in the millennium, the Lord is going to restore the land like the Garden of Eden. So he's going to have his own second Garden of Eden. But if the Lord's going to be doing that, you betcha the devil is going to try to do it as well. How many of you have heard of smart cities? Smart cities, okay. It is very scary, but when you look it up, we are hitting that plane where sci-fi movies have discussed and presented and where we thought is unreal. But mankind is currently trying to build that now. They're trying to build a smart city. Basically, the idea is where carbon emission will be very low. Everything will be electronically connected, uh, probably, most likely, through uh, solar energy. And people don't have to really drive cars. And that when they want to go to uh, the closest location, maximum will be 20 minutes through some kind of fast, kind of train-like object, some kind of train object. And then AI would be the number one factor that will connect everything. This is real stuff. They are actually trying to do this. There are architects who are mocking a few of these smart cities as being unrealistic, but mankind is really trying to attempt to do this. It's like Genesis 11. Yeah. When they built up their new world ORDER system, there are things that you just can't say plainly nowadays. But when they were trying to do their own globalist system in Genesis 11 under Nimrod, it's ridiculous to think about a tower that will reach up to heaven. But God, but God hindered and obstructed that because even though it sounded ridiculous, the Lord knew that this is something that they could even reach themselves. But if you have the power of the Antichrist and some alien beings out there bringing their technology, would a smart city be even possible? Of course, it will be a piece of cake. They can build it then. They can actually build it. Will the devil come down with his demonic offspring? Absolutely. Amen. The Bible says that he will come down. Now, if they come down, don't you think that they will have the knowledge? Oh, yeah. They will have the resources. They will have what they need to build their smart city. They do. So mankind mocks it now. But like they've mocked uh, 100 years ago about certain technological innovations, we've accomplished it. That's right. We've accomplished it. And that's why man has so much faith in science rather than in the Word of God. Yeah. They have faith in the works of man rather than the Word of God. That's right. Now that's kind of good preaching right there. The same thing with salvation, right? Mm -hmm. They have so much faith in the works of man rather than in the Word of God. Yeah. And for those of you who are struggling with your salvation, if you are saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've done it, then you should stop doubting your salvation. Amen. Otherwise, you're pretty much similar like this lost world. You put your faith in the works of man rather than in the word of God. If God says once saved, always saved, then let it go. Amen. Be free from that. Be free from the works of man. You're always looking at the works of man just like the globalist agenda now. Just like all the false religions right now. You got to be free from that mess. One of the smart cities that people are trying to build, you see it in, it's really ridiculous, but it's actually so true. They are trying to do that in Africa, believe it or not, I think it's Senegal, if that's how it's pronounced. There's one guy over there who watched too much of Marvel movies and Black Panther, and he thought, and he seriously trying to build a smart city like the Black Panther movie in Africa. <laughs> so uh, people are trying to do that. China, they have one going on. Japan, they're almost done, I think. They're the ones that's the most progressive. But the height of ridiculousness is not even Elon Musk. Elon Musk, you heard a lot of his dreams about space colonization and a smart city. He's got one going on in Texas now. 
So, believe it or not, it's worldwide. They're trying to build this. Everyone is trying to build a smart city. The most ludicrous one is Neom. Neom. What is Neom? Neom is built by MBS, so Mohammed bin Salman, and the crown prince himself put about with all the other uh, officials and leaders of his domain, $500 billion. Now, they got, the, they got the money, obviously. They got the money themselves. So these Arabic leaders, with all their riches, they put $500 billion in Neom, and Neom consists of three localities. One is what they call the octagon, kind of like the Pentagon, right, in America. I don't know why they're infatuated with shapes. There's something weird about that. A second place is where they claim they'll have a ski resort or something like that, on the hills or the mountains. And then the third place is what they call the line. And the line is kind of like what Trump tried to do with the wall, kind of like that. So it's like a huge wall. But what this wall is, instead of uh, cities and uh, cities and civilization being built like flat like this and spreading out, what they want to do is put it on top of each other and then put it all within this wall. So it's going to be a pretty thick wall right here. And then the, the locations are all built on top of each other. And then it's like, uh, I forgot how many miles, over, I think it's over 100 miles or 170 kilometers, I'm not sure, but it's really, really long, okay? It's miles and, mi uh, it's miles, and miles long. And they're going to make it taller than the current skyscrapers, this wall. That's why the current architects and designers, the joke is when they go in there, uh, they go in there gaining a lot, but then they leave uh, not finishing the project because it's so ridiculous to begin with. So a lot of them have been ma making fun of this project because it just sounds too good to be true, you'll notice. Oh, by the way, this is all made out of mirror. <laughs> now, how are you going to build something like that, right? But you notice it's similar to a design that your king of kings and lord of lords is trying to make. Streets made out of pure gold. Gates as if one pearl. It's like a see-through mirror and glass, everything. That's New Jerusalem. And God is building that for you and I in the future. You don't think Satan wants to build a kingdom like that? Oh, yeah. Right now, it seems ridiculous, but all it takes is just one alien coming down here, and then you got everything you need. And they can build it within probably a couple months with such advanced technology. And if you get giants, Nephilim, helping out in building, imagine how much more progress. Imagine how much more progress can be done. And that's the line. And it is so sci-fi, it is so fan, fantasy genre that if you look at some of uh, what uh, their designs, uh, their plans of how they're going to build it, it's like a backdrop screen for your MacBook for a fantasy sci-fi wallpaper. That's what it really looks like. I mean, they fill it up with so much glass all over and plantation all over. Like as if it's going to be like a garden. So it's going to be filled with vegetation, garden, and city. It is, and it's like glass mirror. It's like too good to be true. It's just plainly ridiculous. But it is ridiculous if uh, mankind at their current pace is going through their current technology, but give it years and they advance. And secondly, you just need those aliens to come down. And that would make a huge difference. Believe it or not, there are people who knew about Neom not just this year, but five years ago. And there have been people researching Neom and people who were warning about Neom being future Babylon five years ago, before the COVID situation happened. 
They knew about this and they were comparing verses. And I'll be very honest, when you look at Neom, there's a lot of interesting references on how it can match the Antichrist city or even Babylon itself. Now, one is the definition itself. One is the definition itself. Now, is Neom Babylon? Well, I'm going to explain to you uh, some verses and some explanations. Now, one is this. Believe it or not, your hand is already at Revelation 22, but I want you to keep your hand there and go to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2. We're going to look at two verses. There are two definitions for Naam, believe it or not. But we don't know how much of it is true. But it is interesting that there are some who claim, when you look up Arabic for Neom, it actually means Babylon. Believe it or not, there are some people who claim that when you trace the Arabic word, it can mean Babylon. A second meaning, believe it or not, is... Let's start off with Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22. In the New Jerusalem, it is all made out of glass, so to speak, or a mirror-like uh, mirror -like reflection. And we'll look at Revelation chapter uh, 21, excuse me, it's 21-22. I confuse that. It's 21-22. That's why I said 22 later. Uh, it's a verse. But chapter 21, verse 22, in God's New Jerusalem, the Bible says... And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Notice it will be a temple, right? So, New Jerusalem, when God brings down that new city, there's going to be no temple in there because God considers Himself to be the temple. If God considers Himself to be the temple, wouldn't Satan want to have His own temple? Yes, you'll notice that the Antichrist... When he comes down, he's going to try to have his own temple. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God, that's the Antichrist, sitteth in where? The temple of God. So that Antichrist, when he comes down and reveals himself, when he reveals himself, he, he would want his own building. And in this own building, he wants God's temple. But isn't it interesting what it's called his revealing? When the Antichrist reveals himself as he goes to this temple, in verse 8 it says, And then shall that what wicked be revealed. Neom, believe it or not, if you look at some online dictionaries, it means wicked. That's strange. That's strange that the Bible says when the Antichrist goes inside the temple of God, at that revealing, it's called wicked. Isn't that strange? That's very strange. If you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, obviously, when we see here at verse 4, the temple of God, that's not referring to Naom, that's not referring to Saudi Arabia region. This is referring to Jerusalem. Okay, then what's going on here? What's going on is Naom, I'm not saying, is the Antichrist main hub or main city. I do not believe in that. I believe what he wants is Jerusalem because the scriptures plainly show it. However, I do believe this. I do believe that Naom, it is trying to, it is a prototype of the Antichrist city. And there is no doubt throughout the past two years, too many prototypes, too many precursors of the Antichrist have been popping out here and there and everywhere. You might say, why is that? The devil is pre preparing mankind for the real thing. Yeah. That's why he's prepping mankind for the real thing. I do not believe uh, Naom is Babylon itself. The reason why is because in Revelation 17 and 18, that is clearly the Roman Catholic Church. That is Vatican City itself in Revelation 17, 18. Now, I'm not going to expound or to prove that, but uh, if you look at uh, my video, 
about Mystery Babylon, just type my name in Mystery Babylon, you'll see me give every single case by case that it's undoubtedly the Roman Catholic Church, Revelation 17, 18. It's not Jerusalem, it's not USA, and uh, it's not Naom, it is, it is for a fact the Roman Catholic Church. Well then, why is Naom having these names? Again, a prototype, a precursor. But here's another thing. Naom is not the only smart city. So you can't just be infatuated with Naom. I mean, what is Musk doing at Texas, right? China, what they're building up. Africa, they just want to, or Senegal area, they just want to build up a Black Panther region. All these uh, places around the world and several in Africa are trying to build up smart cities. So what's my point here? My point is the Antichrist, he wants multiple cities built. He wants multiple cities built because not th the whole world can't just travel to one city. And if he's going to rule the whole world, he's going to have main hubs of cities throughout the entire world. He's going to build that. There is a saying about Babylon at Revelation chapter 17. She is not just known as the woman. She is known as verse 5, Revelation 17 verse 5. You can turn there, Revelation 17, verse 5. The Babylon is a mother, meaning she has daughters, meaning she has Babylonian offspring, so to speak. So there are many Antichrist cities, many Babylonian cities. There is no doubt about that. If you, uh, the current evidence is now, if you look at the Vatican City, you'll see her daughters reflecting. You'll see Masonic symbols, Mormon symbols, Vatican City that matches with Salt Lake City, Utah with some of their obelisk Masonic Mormon symbols. Go to Washington, D.C. itself, they got an obelisk over there with tons of Masonic s symbolism. You, even Jerusalem, they're building something, which is very weird. Uh, you'll see some kind of Vatican uh, symbolism there. So it's not just uh, Rome that has its own Masonic, Roman Catholic uh, imagery, idolatry, and architecture. Washington, D.C. has it too. Jerusalem has some of it, and other places. That's why some people confuse uh, Vatican City with uh, Mystery Babylon, with USA, and with Jerusalem, or other places. Why? Because they all share similarities. They all share similarities. Yeah. Which is why it makes more sense to say that Babylon, Vatican City, the Roman Catholic Church, is the mother, and she has many daughters. Look at Revelation 17, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So she is a mother herself. Naam, believe it or not, this is from the Wall Street Journal, title of their article, A Prince's $500 billion Desert Dream. And you know what consists in this Naam place? Flying cars, robot dinosaurs, and a giant artificial moon. <laughs> this, is, this is going to like crazy La La Land stuff. But it is very interesting. It is very interesting in Revelation chapter 12. The dinosaur, dragon, believe it or not, for some of you who trace that word, is another name for dinosaur. But he, the, dinos, the dinosaur king with his dinosaur legions, they're coming down, Revelation 12. Uh, here's another one. Another one is, remember the moon is having trouble with its shining or something going on at Matthew 24? If you were to think about it, people are flying all over as well. This is very, very strange stuff. Now, is it just me or is it hot in here? I lowered the temperature. Can someone... Yeah, can someone check up the air conditioning? It's, it's too hot here, yeah. Please put it at 70, okay? Please put it at 70. I don't know what temp it is, but it's too hot. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's getting hot in here, bless God. Fired up preaching, okay. Artificial mood, altar call. You know? <laughs> Anyways. But it's so interesting that a lot of the stuff that the crown prince is trying to build, 
that it's uh, matching with what the Antichrist is going to have with his civilization and revelation. What's going on? Again, like I'm telling you, the devil is prepping. The devil is prepping with prototypes and prepping for the real thing eventually, even if they can't build the real thing right now. I mean, you saw what they did. They tried to build the real thing at Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel, but they didn't get to finish it. Mm, that's good. So it's just the same thing, what you're seeing here. With Neom, it's incredible when you study the architecture, the designs. I mean, it's totally sci-fi. They're talking about flying elevators, too. And then you'll see some commercials where a person is flying from one location to another, like jumping on water or like uh, walking on water, hovering over water. It's just insane. Just looking at that thing made me want to invest and save my money to move over there for a successful future. <laughs> but that's what the Antichrist is trying to do, is trying to bring these people yeah. into his main hubs and main cities. Now, if they succeed, who doesn't want to move there? Probably some of you suckers would move out of this godforsaken territory and say, I'm moving to nail, Pastor. <laughs> Better place to live. But imagine the current cities already dragging Christians away uh, and having them move out. Then imagine when the Antichrist creates his own city, more comfortable living situation. Just a little side sermon. You cannot, you cannot... You cannot sacrifice your spiritual walk with God where He called you to be yeah. Come on. so that you can have better security, future, and family life. It's a trash, right? That's what Christians are even sucked into, not just lost people. Yeah. Yeah. Christians are sucked into this. Look, I'm telling you what, if Nahum is built, I wonder if some of you would just move out and get over there. Now, that's just a side sermon. Don't ever let worldly ambitions cloud you from where God called you to be, okay? Amen, preacher. Thank you. As much as I want to move out of here and I hate this place, I know God called me here, so I'm stuck. So I'm going to stay here and keep fighting. And keep fighting. Yeah, that's right. I will fight till God says that uh, you can come home with me. That's it. Amen, brother. With Naam having a lot of this uh, Antichrist prototype stuff coming along, what's the devil's purpose with all this? Well, one, he's clearly trying to imitate what God's trying to do. If you return to Revelation 21, 22, if you return to Revelation chapter 21, verse 22, let's look at this. The Bible says, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now, did you see that? What does it say here? It says that there's no temple because God is the temple. Did you hear that? So if God is the temple, then that, mean, that means the location itself, the location itself where people will be residing and living under is connected to God. Did you hear what I said? The location and place can be connected to God. Now you might say, why is that so? Well, it's pretty simple. Didn't you know that the universe is the clothing of God? That's one example. If you look at the book of Colossians chapter 1 and then compare that with Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says God fills up all of heaven and earth itself. He says in Isaiah 66, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. So notice that the entire location of the universe is God's own clothing, is connected to God. Why? Because God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. So sometimes when you're in a location, God can somehow be there or connected to that. If that is the case... Then the question is, could the devil do the same thing as well? Could there be also a demonic spirit that can connect to a place? Well, think about it. The Holy Spirit can reside in a person, right? Can a, a demon reside in a person? Yeah. There are plenty of verses on that. Demon possession. Holy Spirit possession versus, versus demon possession, right? 
if the Holy Spirit can inhabit and be inside a body, and devils can do that too, this brings up the next question. Can the devils reside and possess and be in an object? Yeah. Well, you hear those horror stories of certain idols, uh, merry idols crying blood, uh, those Hindu gods uh, just pouring out milk, which is strange stuff. That's all demonic stuff. So demons can reside in objects. Why not a place then? Yeah, that's good. Why not a place? Really good. Did you forget the passage? Go back to Revelation 17. Revelation 17. Notice that this is a female demonic spirit. A female demonic spirit. In verse 16. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked. So this is a woman condemned by God, a female demonic spirit de condemned by God. Look at verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. That is how God is seeing her in the spirit world. He is seeing this thing, whatever this thing is, as a woman in a spirit world and as a whorish woman. That's how God is seeing in the spiritual realm here. So notice, spiritually, it's a woman. All right, spiritually, it's a woman. It's a female spirit, a woman spirit. What is she? She's a city at verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. Plain. Think about it. If this female demonic spirit, the whore of Revelation 17, this uh, wicked spirit is known as a city, is known as Mystery Babylon, if devils can do that, why not the devil himself? Can he connect himself with a city, with a place? Oh, yeah. Yes. Look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. The devil can do that too. A long time ago, a long, long time ago, before Adam and Eve were able to enjoy the Garden of Eden, Satan enjoyed his own Garden of Eden. But notice how the Garden of Eden is described right here. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Okay, that's Satan. But look at this. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in the de uh, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Look at this. When the Bible says Satan has been in Eden, it seems to say at verse 13 that every precious stone in Eden was Satan's covering, like he's built and a part of that. Could that be true? Well, this is even more so if we look at Ezekiel 31. Mm -hmm. It's even more so when the Bible says that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that tree in the Garden of Eden, is actually Satan is actually Satan. Look at Ezekiel chapter 31. Look at Ezekiel chapter 31 and notice what the Bible says in verse 3. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of a high stature and his top was among the thick boughs. Look at verse 7. Thus was he fair in his greatness in the length of his branches. Verse 8, the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Did you notice that? The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto his beauty. Wow. Strange, the language right here. Well, we know then this is that this ain't just a normal Assyrian. This has to be someone who was in the Garden of Eden and who God judged and it was extremely beautiful. 
It's pretty obvious then. That's Lucifer. That's actually Satan himself. If that is Satan himself, then notice at verse 9, the, all, all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. If you keep reading down, what did God do with him? He says, uh, the Lord says in verse Mm, 18. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth, to hell. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. Wait, wait, wait. You said Assyrian at verse 3. Then you switch it to Pharaoh and all his multitude. What's going on right here? This is not just normal Egyptian or Assyrian rulers. This is a spiritual demonic king who controls and rules all over these rulers. What did Satan say? All these kingdoms of the world are not Pharaoh's or the Assyrian. Satan said to Jesus, all these kingdoms of the world, Egypt, Assyria, Rome, and all that, are mine. And I give to them whomsoever I will. There is no doubt this is clearly Satan, unless you want to say Pharaoh is that one who's fairer than the tree of Eden that's going down to hell. No, it's pretty plain who this is. If you look at Isaiah 14, it's even more plain. Yeah. Lucifer is the one speaking, and God says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. It's pretty obvious. This is no doubt Satan himself. And notice how Eden is connected with Satan. Yeah. You'll notice at verse 16, I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the what? Nether parts of the earth. What in the world? Eden goes down to hell with him? Why is that? Ezekiel 28. He's the anointed cherub. He has been in Eden and every precious stone was his covering. And he has to go to hell. So, some interesting stuff here is Satan is connected. Satan himself is connected to the place like God is connected to the place. He is connected to the Garden of Eden. Naam and all these smart cities, they're building their own new Jerusalem and a Garden of Eden. With shrubbery everywhere, it's just so beautiful. Like You would go, whoa, is this realistic? That's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to imitate New Jerusalem and the Garden of Eden. And the Antichrist, when he builds that, every sucker will go into there. And every sucker, in order to survive and do marketing, will take the mark over there. That's right. I mean, you guys are suckers right now following with the world system and getting out of God's calling out of your life to find an easier location, easier living scenario. What do you think it's going to happen when this really comes out? Yeah. Of course everybody would want that, even Christians, sadly. Satan is connected to a location and a place. And he's going to receive worship. There's a lot of Muslim uh, references when you're thinking about Naam. Go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. There's a lot of Muslim references to the Antichrist. There's a lot of Muslim references to the Antichrist. Now, I've given a teaching. I'm not going to explain it here, but I've, if you go to my verse-by-verse -verse Bible study and my commentary on Revelation, I believe that the Antichrist will be the Pope, and then the false prophet is, can be very likely, a Muslim. Uh, quick, quick thing is the Pope is known as a Christ, actually. Matching Antichrist. The false prophet is known to be as a prophet to the Muslim world. But we know Muhammad is a false prophet. There's just too many stuff in there. But I'm not going to get into that. That's a, I've given a separate teaching on that on who is the false prophet. And you can watch that one. However, uh, when we return right here, the point is the Antichrist has a lot of Muslim references as well. You might say, why is that? Because there are three big religions that the Antichrist is connecting to. He is a Pope, Roman Catholic, but he has connections to the big three. 
not just one. Roman Catholicism is one, second is Judaism, and then the third is Islam. The third is Islam. Those are the big three main religions, and the Antichrist, he's obviously going to pick the, uh, the biggest, the major religions, the most influential worldwide religions, where he can use it to deceive people. I mean, if he's just going to be Muslim, then he can't deceive the Christians. And if he's only going to be Catholic, then he's not going to deceive the Muslims. And Catholicism and Islam are the biggest religions, and they make up the majority population of our world. So, it's going to make more sense the Antichrist is going to conglomerate uh, religions, because it's a one-world religion. It's not one religion. So that's why I don't restrict him to just one, like Muslim or something like that. Yeah. He's definitely multi-religious. He is one world religion himself. So, isn't it strange that Naam, that when you look at some of these factors that they have, one we know in Babylon, it's, it has seven mountains. That's why Rome is the city on seven hills, and we see a matching with uh, the whore of Revelation 17, Babylon. But what about uh, Naam? Believe it or not, when you uh, pull up the map of Saudi Arabia, you're going to see seven main mountain peaks there where they're going to build their Naam. If you go to the border of Jordan, then you go south from there, and that's where Naam's going to be built. It's built by that location next to the Red Sea. So when they're building their location by the Red Sea, and if you go south from the border of Jordan, exactly how their borders go, and count how many mountain peaks are high enough with how many miles they're going to build the line or Naam, it actually counts to seven mountain peaks. It's just kind of crazy. Now, there may have been changes uh, later on, but a couple of years ago, when you were to research that, it is seven main mountain peaks, which is kind of crazy. Another thing is this, if you look at the measurements of Naam, it is said that it's going to be 33 times larger than New York City. And if it's 33 times larger than New York City, if you measure that, this is interesting, with New Jerusalem, some people say that Naam is seven times larger than New Jerusalem. Now, what is Satan trying to do? And he's trying to do a seven on top of that? Seven times? That's God's number. What is Satan trying to do? Is he trying to one up? Is he trying to go a level more up on God? It's very strange. It's very strange. Another thing, if it connects to Islam about Naam, think about where the Antichrist is going to receive worship, right? Now, this is interesting. I mentioned that the false prophet is going to be Muslim, right? That's what I personally believe. That's what I personally believe. But if you look at Revelation 13, 11, then this false prophet, if he's going to be Muslim, the Bible says in verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay. If the false prophet is Muslim and he wants people to uh, worship the image, then where is he going to be? Where the black box is. The Kaaba, he can go to Mecca. Well, what's the only image you can think of? It's that black box. Yeah. But uh, we've heard Muslim apologists saying, it's not an idol. It's not an image. Even though we're bowing down or praying in front of it, you know, we're not worshipping it. We're just like those Catholics when we bow down and in front of the image of Mary and we're not worshipping them. <laughs> That's a great Muslim apolo apologist. That's a great Muslim <laughs> apologist argument, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's so ridiculous. But... Who are they to say when they didn't look at their own writings? If you actually look at some of their own writings about that uh, black box, it's very, very uh, strange. It matches with Revelation 13, 15. Remember, look at that verse. What does it say? It says that the false prophet, 
he's actually going to make sure that it speaks, right? The image. He's going to make sure it speaks and then people will see that it is God in it. All right. So it is an image or a representation of God. Here is some Muslim writings that might surprise you. At Termidi, uh, Termidi and Al-Abani notes this. Quote, Allah will raise up the black stone. Remember that black stone thing? Okay. <laughs> On the day of judgment. Oh, during the end times. And it will have two eyes and a tongue, which it talks with. And it will give witness to everyone who touched it in truth. <laughs> well, verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Oh, it gets better. Here's another one. Ibn Abbas said this. This is narrated by al Midhi again. And uh, I, it's 961 Ibn Maja 2944. And this is hadith. So this is all hadith. If you want to find flaws with Islam, it's, uh, it's so easy. Just dig up the hadith. Hadith is brutal. It's very brutal. It's very brutal. But this is what their hadith says. The messenger of Allah said concerning the stone, By Allah, Allah will bring it forth on the day of resurrection, and it will have two eyes which it will see and a tongue with which it will speak, and it will testify in favor of those who touched it in sincerity. Another one, this is narrated by Ibn Umar, said this, I heard the messenger of Allah say, touching them both, which is the black stone, and al-Rukun al-Yamani, uh, is an expi uh, expi uh, expiation for sins. Uh, let's see right here. Another one is by Tariq Baghdad by Al-Khatib. He says, Al -ilal, al, uh, uh, he says right here, the black stone is Allah's right hand on earth with which he shakes the hand of his slaves. Oh, look at this black box and all of a sudden it speaks to you with eyes and a mouth, Allah! <laughs> and then worship and then they all praise Allah through this black box and of course they're not worshiping it you know they're worshiping Allah who's speaking in it see that's how the devil deceives people like those Catholics yeah like a lot of other idolaters who pretend they're not but they really are mm -hmm. knowing uh, these facts wow it's crazy then if the false prophet can do that it makes you wonder, would Naam be the city where the false prophet is then? The false prophet could be in Naam. That would be his home, his headquarters. The Antichrist, his home, his headquarters is Vatican City. But then, during the midst of the tribulation, he moves into Jerusalem. And the false prophet will start trying to move into but then you read Zechariah, you forget the chapter in Zechariah, they're going to rebuild Babylon in the land of Shinar again. So what's going on? There's so many different cities going on wow. that the Antichrist will connect himself to and the false prophet. Those smart cities that they're building, I'd say keep an eye on that. Maybe they're building the future of where the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the ten kings would want to inhabit. That's something to think about. Another one is, let's look at these verses here. Ezekiel 31, we pointed out that one, 
Satan is connected to the Garden of Eden. Yes? Okay, so that's one. We're going to look at the history now. The history. You know what I believe? I believe Satan will rebuild his Garden of Eden. And Naom and all these other cities are paving a way for that. They're showing you, uh, they are precursors, they are reflections of what's going to show you what's really going to happen. I really believe Satan's going to do this. Why? Because there's a history of doing that. Let me repeat that again. There's a history of doing that. One is Ezekiel 31, which we already read, the Garden of Eden itself. And Satan, how he tied himself to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And sadly, uh, Adam and Eve uh, partook in that fruit. They partook in that fruit. So there's one. But the second thing is go to Jude. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude 1, verse 6. Jude 1, verse 6. Now, you can apply this to the pre-Adamic era or Noah's flood. It don't matter. You can apply to both, to be honest. So in Jude 1, 6, it reads, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, the time period, you can guess is when those fallen angels, when they fell, they've done that at the pre-Adamic era. they also done that during Noah's flood. They left uh, their celestial abode, came down here on earth, lived amongst humans. Okay? Now, when they lived amongst humans, notice at verse 6, it says, but left their what? Own habitation. Do you see that? Yeah. They have their own habitat. Now, when they come down on this earth, they're not just going to be homeless. Come on. They want to rebuild their habitat. That's really good. Oh, wow. So during Noah's flood, people are wondering where those pyramids come from, especially since it's worldwide, not just in Egypt, um, which is just too weird. Yeah. Why is that? Sons of God were building their own civilization. When people talk about Atlantis, when they talk about the times of the gods, they would talk about how it's like the Garden of Eden. It's like a beautiful garden, a paradise, and a beautiful city. Okay, that's what's been going on during Noah's flood. Now look at verse 7. Even as, oh, following the example, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. So Sodom and Gomorrah followed the example. Go to Genesis 13. Genesis 13. Sodom and Gomorrah is a very wicked city, right? But look what the Bible says. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 10, verse 10. Right. Now, Naom is a beautiful paradise in the middle of a desert. Uh, it's interesting that if you look at the book of Deuteronomy, I think, the Bible talks about a garden in Egypt, it says. Yeah. So Egypt also had their Garden of Eden going on. And then you got their pyramids connected to the sons of God. Isn't that strange? So there's a history going on here of a garden, them building their own garden. But Sodom and Gomorrah as well. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, it was like what? Even as the what? Garden of the Lord. Like the what? Land of Egypt. There's a demonic activity, a history of them building their own gardens. Wow. They just like to build their own gardens. Strange. Very strange. Whenever there's a son of God activity or demonic activity, they build their own garden. Look at Revelation 12 then. Are those sons of God coming down on the earth? Yes. Look at Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says in verse 9, Revelation 12 verse 9, and then your other hand to go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. 
Notice what's going to happen in the end times. One, Lucifer and the sons of God, they come down on the earth again. The Bible says in verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into where? The earth. And the angels, his angels were cast out with him. Keep your hand there. We're going to go back. Go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Notice what the Word of God reads here in Isaiah chapter 66. And he discusses about uh, the end times and what's going to happen. It says at verse uh, 6, A voice of noise from the city, a voice of from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Okay, so this is talking about the day of the Lord. Look at verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Amen. Okay, so there is no doubt right here that this is talking about Armageddon, the tribulation, right? Now, when he comes down to send down judgment, where is he sending down judgment? To places where they have gardens. Look at verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the where? Gardens. You know, what, you know what's going on? See, in the tribulation, the wicked people are building their own gardens. They're building their gardens. There's no doubt about That's that. That's good, Pastor. Yeah, so they are trying to... There's no doubt about it. When you look at this history, they are rebuilding a garden of Eden. But what, does Satan, what is Satan scared of? If you go back to Revelation 12, your hand is there. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Are they going to build a Naom, a happy life, a happy city? No, the world... Uh, and what I mean by the world is the earth itself. Creation itself knows its doom. Look at verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So, woe to the places on earth, the habitations on the earth. You can build a garden, but woe to them. Why? Because the devil knows it ain't going to last. It's something bad's going to happen. Go to Joel 3. Joel 3. You know what's going to happen? They're not going to succeed. God's going to show to them that it's going to be desolate. It's going to be wilderness. Look how God's sarcasm works. He says, okay, you want to build a Garden of Eden? I'll show you Garden of Eden. <laughs> so look at Joel chapter 3. When God comes down, right? Like Isaiah 66, when God comes down at Armageddon in wrath and fury. Joel 3, 1, it's talking about the same thing. For behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So notice right here, he's going to gather the nations and judge them. Now, when he judges them, look what the Bible says at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. The context is Armageddon, when he comes down and judges them. Verse 2, uh, verse 1, verse 1, by context. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Right? Armageddon. When he comes, verse 3, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. <laughs> this is funny. When God comes down with his army... At verse 2, right? Verse 2 talks about the army that comes down with him. It says here, this is sarcasm. The land is as the garden of Edom before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. You know what, uh, you know what the Bible shows right here? When, when the army comes down, the land in front of them is like a what? Garden of Eden. That's really good. Wow. But behind them, because they're leaving a trail of fire, it's a wilderness. Oh, a second Garden of Eden. Yeah, the Garden of Eden, is, it's like a land of the Garden of Eden before them, but behind them, when they march through, it's a desolate wilderness. And then 
God's going to uh, build up his own Garden of Eden. Amen. Look at the book of Isaiah. Look at the book of Isaiah. Notice how God's restoring everything. And when he restores everything, it's going to be like the garden of the Lord. It's going to be like Eden. Look at the book of Isaiah. And uh, let me find the chapter here. Look at Isaiah chapter mm, 51. 51 verse 3. Isaiah 51 3. After God destroys Naom, he's going to say, uh, I'm going to build uh, my own garden of Eden now. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like what? Eden. Eden. And her desert like what? The garden of the Lord. See, that's what mankind's trying to do. They're trying to build their own garden of the Lord in the desert. But God says, no, I build it. Yeah. I build it. So he's going to restore it after he burns up the Antichrist nations and their, uh, new, uh, their one world government system. So God restores everything again. So there is a second Garden of Eden that the Lord will have at the millennium. But there's also one from the devil. He wants to restore his own second Garden of Eden sometime in the future. So my advice to Christians, as I look at this more and more, my advice to Christian is don't uh, be careful. A lot of people are moving now. Yeah. A lot of people are moving because life is just too tough. Where God called you to be and what you should be doing, don't get caught up with this spirit of Nahum. That's what's going on right now. That's what the devil is doing. Everyone wants to move to a place where it's most convenient for their job, their family, locality, and everything. Guess what? In the tribulation, way more so, those people. Because every place you go to is bad. And the best place is those smart cities. You'd be the sucker too. You'd be the sucker too. Don't be caught up by this spirit. Don't be Lot who saw Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah like it's the garden of the Lord and he moved there and he lost everything. He lost his testimony and everything. You don't be that Christian. Let's close with a word of prayer. Now, Father, I want to thank you so much for the study of your book, but also something sobering to think about. The devil is trying to build his location, his own cities. I pray that Christians won't be caught up with that and think about, oh, what a beautiful life. Oh, what a nice place to move in. Why can't we trust you? Why don't we trust you, Heavenly Father, to provide our needs, to provide our housing, to take care of our family, to take care of our finances, rather than seek in our own way by man's work and civilization. Uh, again, the works of man are elevated above the word of God, sadly. Help us to trust in your word rather than trusting in our own works, in man's works of their city, of their life and civilization. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.